Hi guys, I'm Shmi. This is a 2019 McLaren 570. Hi guys, Matt Watson here, Car Wow. That's right, 10 minute video, 10 second drag race, lots of winking at the camera. Hi guys, nothing anywhere near as glamorous as that, I'm afraid, it's just Tab. <laughs> In this one, it's time to get your geek specs on. Yes, one for the nerds, bit of a nerd myself, but we're gonna be looking at the aerodynamics of this car, just what makes it cut through the air so darn well. Should be an interesting one, let's go. So one look at this car and you know it means business. It's low to the ground, it's wide, it's aggressive and it cuts through the air like a knife. I've said it in my previous videos, when you're going fast in this thing, you, the only thing you really hear is the tire noise. You don't hear much wind noise. That's because it just slices through the air. The designers did a fantastic job of taking out anything that might act as some kind of air brake and, and really design it so that it cuts through the air. No rear spoiler to think of. Um, that underbelly, which is just a big plastic sheet, essentially. And I'm gonna talk about what makes this car so special in that respect. So let's take a closer look. So, starting with that front view, what an awesome view it is. Super low, super wide, super aggressive, has a great road presence, and it's all about cutting through the air with ease. I prefer this to, uh, for example, a Hurricane. I think a Hurricane is a bit more wedge-shaped, a bit more like a doorstop. This flows better, it's got more, uh, more dynamic presence to it, um, and just kind of looks like it's a bit more flowing to me, so uh, definitely prefer it. Got two air intakes, one here, one here. Now I believe they are for the AC matrixes, so they deal with the cooling. You see that design on a lot of mid-engine, rear-engine cars, so I believe the 911 has them as well. But it just is all about cutting through the air. Lots of fly splats there as well, uh, because obviously the car is used, it'd be a crime not to. Flying round, still here. Uh, again, uh, all about aerodynamics. Um, you've got the, the vents in there. I don't know if you can see that very well on camera. But vents in there to get air into the wheel area and cool those huge carbon ceramics. Um, this is a design feature I really, really like on this car. This side detail, this side scoop. Um, now, uh, I think they're called the door oblique panels or something, but if you look at this shape, it is like an aircraft wing, the top of an aircraft wing, right? So, sciencey bit, if we've got uh, high pressure air in here, following down here, uh, it has to fill a bigger area, which means lower pressure air. And that lower, lower pressure air is gonna be literally forced stroke sucked into there. Now, can't see that so well, um, but in there I believe is the rad um, an oil cooler to deal with cooling down the engine, which has to work very hard. But the air forced in here and then pops out the back. And if I come round the back, you'll see here, uh, there is plenty of space for the air to exit the car. They're not lights, that's a matrix that just kind of lets air out. Big gap in there and a big gap under here. And I love how exposed everything is. You can see right into the engine bay and see all the workings. That is a design feature that I've always loved about this car. It's great to be able to see an engine like that. Alas, these days are not much longer. Uh, no one wants to look at a motor at the bottom of a car for an EV, but that's the way it's going. Um, what I'd like to do as part of this video is get under the rear bonnet hood. Don't know what you call it. So let's go about doing that. So let's open this and there is a button here which will release this thing here. And that gives us to access, it gives us some access to remove this cover. Now, time for a disclaimer. Obviously, I'm not a qualified uh, McLaren mechanic in any way, shape or form. So uh, they're going to fly a guy down, especially in a helicopter, just to assist with this bit. And apparently I can use a chainsaw and a hammer to get the, uh, the cover off. So let's do that. Whilst that's happening, uh, let's talk a little bit about drag coefficient. Now, this is incredibly geeky and way beyond my level of understanding, especially from the mathematical perspective. There's a very detailed equation here. But what is drag coefficient? Well, effectively, the lower the number, 
the better the car is at cutting through the air. Now this has a drag coefficient of 0.32, I believe, which is very, very good. But uh, there's lots of differing factors in terms of how this is calculated. Um, and the other thing to note here is how well a car cuts through the air. So it's all about the surface area and fluid dynamics. Now, here's another thing to bear in mind. The Tesla, uh, the Model S, the Plaid version, that has a drag coefficient apparently of 0.2. And you'd think, hmm, it's a bigger car. The car is bigger, uh, it's got a chunkier front end. Why is it lower, i.e. more aerodynamic than this McLaren? Well, there's a reason for that. If you look at an EV, you'll notice one thing about them. They don't have any air intakes, really. It's all flat fronted. And that prevents air being drawn in to places where it can't get out of so easily. Now, heater matrices that we looked at earlier, air does not th flow through those very easily. It causes a lot of drag. And ultimately, uh, that's going to affect how aerodynamic a car is. So, EVs do so well at this because of a lack of air intakes. Air intakes cause turbulence around the car, it's uneven. Basically, you want something that cuts completely clean through the air. Now, the ultimate in aerodynamic shape is probably the spaceship from the flight of the Navigator. Beautiful design, um, massively impractical in a supermarket car park. But that is the premise of aerodynamism. Uh, Can we call it that? Aerodynamics? Uh, fluid, fluid dynamics? But yeah, that's what it's all about, and that's why uh, EVs have such a low drag coefficient. That's a geeky bit over with. Now let's get a look into this engine bay. Okay, so here we are inside the engine bay. That hammer and chainsaw have worked really well to get that cover off. It's a great method for doing that. As you can see, no damage to the engine at all. But uh, yeah, cheers for the bit of advice on that. But anyway, uh, Let's take a look. This is it, the M838T engine, twin turbo V8, 3.8 litre engine. 3.8 litres of pure fun. Now, for an engine to work, uh, it needs air. I'm going to try and work out where most of the bits are just by my own knowledge. I do fully appreciate this could be massively wrong, not being a trained mechanic, but I think I've got a pretty good idea. And um, I've just noticed in there that kind of actually looks like that might be the oil cooler. This thing in here because that's very similar to the pictures I've seen of one online so uh, yeah that could be where that magic happens but anyway the airflow so air needs to come into an engine so looking here I think we've got the air boxes the uh, of these obviously filter the air that's coming into the engine uh, it looks potentially like that might happen some kind of through here somehow there is ends up here, um, don't quote me on that, but air comes in through here, down this pipe here, um, we get some focus on that, yeah, down this pipe here, and then into the turbocharger. Now the turbochargers are kind of down in there, uh, in this car, I've seen the M838 engine out, I've seen pictures of it, the turbochargers are on the outside. Now in the new V6 on the Artura, it's a hot V, so the turbos are kind of in here. It, they're sat in there, just like on that Merc V8. Um, but air comes in through the turbocharger, which is being spun up by the exhaust gases, and then in here to the charge cooler, the intercooler, um, and then through this pipe here and into the intake manifold, which is kind of these four beautiful uh, pipes you can see in there, the black ones. Uh, into there, does its business in the engine, um, without doubt, uh, blows up and then uh, mixed with fuel blows up and then comes out the uh, exhaust side. Now the exhaust manifold for this is on the underside of that block, can't see it really very well from here without getting underneath the car I think. Um, but that comes out, drives the turbocharger, which is again down in there, in through here, uh, which is the exhaust, up through here and then out the back there through the um, exhaust boxes, the cats, um, and then exits the car around here. Just to get some focus on that. Yeah, there you go, the exhaust. But yeah, really kind of almost a work of art. And I think still darn good value for money in terms of what you're getting here and, and what you're paying. I'm really very impressed. Now, you'll notice just how far forward that engine is. Oh, look at my strange head there, interesting. Uh, you'll notice just how far forward the engine is. Obviously, they want to keep the mass forward, 
Um, so you're kind of rotating the car around the center of mass when you're driving along, and that's why it handles so well. That's why it does what it does so well. Um, and the gearbox down here, uh, gearbox and drive shafts all down here at the back. Oh, that kind of looks like an oil cooler as well. <laughs> so, uh, okay, it's official. I have absolutely no idea where the oil cooler is in this car. So uh, do chime in if you know. But um, very, very impressive. It's real work of art. This thing here is just a sort of plastic cover. Uh, but I really love the way that looks through the grate at the back when the uh, the exhaust, sorry, not the exhaust back on, when that cover is back on, it looks really good. And a uh, little marking there, chassis number and what have you, all good. And subframe and chassis. But yeah, it's very, very well put together. And it just looks fab. It looks stunning. It looks great. So that's uh, a look inside the engine bay. And I've had never had any problems with this overheating at all. Uh, always runs well, I think because the airflow is so good through this car. It's just um, very well done indeed. So, quick look round the aerodynamics uh, of this car and why it's so quiet at high speed, apart from the exhaust noise, which is good. Uh, we like that. Anyway, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one. Bye for now.